on Canyon's View, so you could always refer back to it, share it with the teacher. Our professional development norms, um, as we go through here, just remember to participate, ask questions, mute your microphone. You can turn your camera on or off if you're comfortable. Um, if you have questions, type it in the chat or we will do some questions at the end there. Uh, this sticks, this area, our presentation today is mostly focused around the data for decision-making piece. And I'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. So your learning intention today, we're going to learn about the Learn platform uh, so that you can determine what digital tools are safe and effective and incorporate them effectively into your classroom. Um, so our agenda for today a little bit, we're going to talk a bit about data privacy. Just make sure we're clarifying a few terms. We're going to clarify COPPA and FERPA. Then I'm going to go over the Learn platform. We're going to walk through it, log in, check an app, do all the fun things there. Okay, so first things first, kind of what's the whole reason, what's the whole purpose behind data privacy? And really it comes down to this idea that everyone in our schools is doing something different, using a different tool, having a better this or a better that that they, that they have and that they want people to be using. Um, also, when it comes to data and our privacy, our parents are really locked out sometimes. Uh, they're not included in some of these conversations. They don't know what's going on in our schools and they feel a little left out. And so a lot of the data privacy stuff we're going to talk about today and the, and the Learn platform is going to help uh, can work on all of those things and that communication between the two. So some clarification at some, um, just some quick vocabulary for us as we get started. Uh, the first one being FERPA. This is the one that most of us are comfortable in, and with. Uh, most of us grew up with it in school. We, we heard about this or it's been around for a long time. Remember FERPA is basically a federal law that says you can't share student information uh, with anyone unless it's for an educational purpose. And so that's kind of, you know, you don't share a student's name or information online or whatever it is. COPPA is one of the newer ones, which is the Online Privacy Protection Act. So the Online Privacy Protection Act, this is basically saying you can't collect information from students under 13 and you can't collect information from any student if it's for a com commercial purpose. And so um, that will, this is what we're gonna talk a lot about today because a lot of Learn Platform delves directly into this. And there's some real live, consequences for um, our educators and our schools as it relates to COPPA. So just a little bit about what personalized information is, or this PII is what they call it, but it's personal information. People always may say, well, is this personal information or is that personal information? So I want you to kind of think about it from this perspective. If I said to you, um, my friend is a one-handed pirate with an irrational fear of crocodiles and ticking clocks, do you know who I'm talking about? You take and you think for a second, we all kind of do, right? We're like, oh yeah, that's Captain Hook, that's easy. That All of that information is personally identifiable information and would be inappropriate to share about one of my students. So if I said to someone, oh yeah, I have a student who is a one-handed pirate with a rational fear of crocodiles and ticking clocks, I would be breaking FERPA and COPPA by sharing that information because it is personally identifiable information. We're used to the direct identifiers, things like name, social security number, student ID, we get that. We're like, I can do that. I don't share that information. Birth dates, we're like, oh, we don't share birth dates. We, I don't do these things, but it's these other linked information. And that's what a lot of our websites are actually gathering. And that's what this data information is going to talk about today. So for example, if you're pulling your data and you're pulling and saying, okay, what's your pirate status and how many hooks do you have? Um, that right there, this information would be person identifiable, right? If I break it down a little bit more and say, well, I'm going to get rid of the hook question. Is it still person identifiable? Well, yeah, there's one person in the class who's a pirate. It's very person identifiable, right? If I break it down even more to this perspective, am I good? Am I sharing personally identifiable information? The answer is yes. It's still race, gender, ethnicity. Those types of things are still person identifiable. So when our teachers and us in our classrooms are using software that we have to maybe create an account for and we share their name and their email address, that's the type of stuff that we're talking about here today. That's that personally identifiable information that a lot of companies are starting to collect. And that's what the Learn platform is going to help support us with. 
So what the Learn platform is, is basically a collection of digital resources, digital tools that um, are listed out here. And they, we've kind of investigated them for their privacy status and looking at some of those things. So I'll talk about how to get into the Learn platform in just a minute. But basically, this is what it looks like. As a teacher, a, a coach, a, an administrator finds a tool that they're interested in, they can request it. We look at the digital privacy concept, the, the privacy policy, all of the aspects, and then we put listed in here. One of the big parts of COPA is uh, COPA says that a parent should be able to request the privacy policy of any application that their student is using at school. So think about that as a classroom teacher. Could I provide the privacy policy for all the apps, websites, programs that my students are using in my class? Probably not, right? That's what this website helps us to do is to gather all of those types of things as well. So let's first delve into it a little bit and log in. So to log into the Learn platform, you are going to go to learn.canyonsdistrict.org. And it's okay if I get a little fast from you, I will have all of this, uh, this video and this presentation will be there. You can always refer back to it. If you're brand new to the Learn platform, it's gonna ask you to choose. Are you an educator, administrator, or a provider? You're gonna choose educator and then hit the blue continue button at the bottom. Then it's gonna say, are you in Canyon School District? You're gonna say, yes, I am, go to dashboard. If you've already logged in before, it should take you straight to the dashboard. All right, you're gonna sign in with your CSD docs. That's super important. Not your at Canyon's district email, but your CSD docs email. Super important as you go through that, okay? Once you get in there, you're gonna see three main statuses. The first status that you're going to see is this approved for use. That means we've looked at it, you're good to go. Uh, pending means it's something that's been submitted and we haven't gone through the privacy policy yet. And so we're still working on that. And then reviewed and denied lets you know we've looked at it and there's some privacy concerns and I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. There's some other approval statuses that you can see here. Uh, things like st uh, staff use only, so for example, Facebook and Twitter are staff use only. We're not, uh, students are not allowed to be on them on devices and teachers are not allowed to ask students to log into these for those certain reasons. Um, there's also approved for different grade levels, approved for 13 plus, and then that reviewed and denied like I was talking about. So let's look at uh, one of those reviewed and denied because I wanna show you um, something about that. And coaches, this will be new to you. Um, in the reviewed and denied piece, if you're like, okay, well, why was that denied? We have um, updated a denial decision in each of them. So if a teacher or you have a question about them, you can click on it and it will tell you why it was denied. So for example, Discord was denied because it creates an unrestricted student communication tool uh, that teachers and the district cannot monitor and it's an unsafe environment for our students to be in. So therefore Discord is not allowed. Um, so you can see that in some of these. It's there's, Most of them are pretty um, common reasons why Snapchat. Okay, we understand why maybe we won't have our students at school in class using Snapchat. Um, it also might have a curriculum reason. So for example, this teacher monster to read, the, um, the English, the ELA, folk have looked at this and it actually teaches the words incorrectly and some of the phonemes incorrectly. So they've gone through and kind of played with it. And because it has a British accent involved in the program, um, it's actually teaching some of the letter sounds the wrong way. So they said, this is a not a good program for a teacher to use because it's actually teaching the students the wrong way to look at this. So um, that's just some information for you as you're going through and looking at these products. Okay. So let us um, talk about how to submit a request. So if you are, you know, you're in class and you're like, okay, let's, I want to, you know, use a certain product. So let us find a product. So we're going to search in here. So I think it's called Reads 27 or something like that. So the first thing you do when you come up here is you're going to just search the name of the program. And it's going to bring up everything that's in our library. If it's not in the library, you can see I've got approved things, not approved things. 
If it's not in the library, this blue button will show. You're going to click show results. These are things we haven't looked at yet. So congratulations, you found something that we aren't sure, we haven't seen yet come across. That doesn't mean you can't use it. It just means we haven't, we haven't checked the privacy policy for, for you. So let's go down here. This is what we're going to look at. When I'm like, okay, this is the app I want to use. Um, what, what do I need to do? I'm going to click the request button. Once I click the request button, it's going to bring up this form. This form is what I fill out to get this requested. So I pick, I work in Canyon School District. Ask me what school do I work at? I work at Bella Vista. What grade level do I teach? I actually teach 10th grade at Bella Vista. Uh, it's a special program, don't ask. Um, and it's gonna ask me, how am I going to use this in the classroom? This kind of helps support and understand so we can use this to give other teachers ideas um, and, and different things as you go through. So I'm going to say how this is going to be used in the classroom. It will be used blah, 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 blah. And what instructional priority does this address? Well, this one is going to address these pieces I can say in there, uh, what it addresses, and then why should we consider this? This is really helpful because of blah, 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 blah. And then you click Submit. That's it. Uh, a request will come in to our team. We'll look at it, check the privacy policy, and then you'll get an email to your Canyon, your CSD Docs email that says, congratulations, this is the new status of that. So that is the requesting um, process. We re recommend that you request any digital tool that you're using, whether it be an app, a website, um, those types of things, because this just helps you make sure and understand what those privacy levels are. There's another plus to this library we have is you can come in here and say, I really want something that will help my students do do X, Y, and Z, or I'm looking at for a, an app that will be good for reading, I can click in here and find a bunch of apps that are, people have already looked at that would be good for reading. So I'm like, oh, cool. I never thought about doing kids AZ, right? Maybe that's the one I'm going to get to. I haven't looked at that. What is this about? I can even click on the details and learn information about what the app does, what some of the capabilities, if anyone's given feedback on it and the privacy status um, around the nation uh, for this app. So you can see it's used throughout different places in the country and um, it's approved in most of those 42 organizations. You know, one organization is reviewed and denied it type of a thing. So it gives me some information. So not only is this a place for me to check and make sure that I'm using things appropriately uh, in the software, but it also allows me to look and see um, what options are out there, okay? So that's how you're gonna go through and request a product that will get it through here. So a little bit about the process it goes through once it's requested. Once you submit a request, it comes to my team. Uh, we look at it for that, that digital privacy policy. Is this safe for students? Does it collect information that we don't need or do need? Um, if it's content related, We'll ask a content team to look at it as well. Um, so like, for example, that one reading app that is not teaching the phonemes correctly, we can catch some of those things to help support you um, as educators knowing, you know, oh, is this going to be the best thing for my student? And then that comes back to you. So this is the complex way of looking at it. It's, it's not as enjoyable as fun. Um, but basically, that's the process. Now, if it does, let's say, get uh, denied for some reason and you're, you want more information or you think you have more information that wasn't considered, there is an appeal process as well so that you can say, oh, wait, I don't think you looked at this this way. Will you take a look at this again and we can get more information because we want this to be what's best for our educators in the classroom while protecting student privacy as they go through. Okay? So like I said, a part of this also is that communication piece for parents. So we have you know, the platform itself inside where teachers can log in and look and see what's going on, request different apps and things like that. But there's also a platform for parents because sometimes our parents want to know what apps are you using in your school? Like what apps are being used in our classrooms? This is the district's public library. It's available on the Kansas District website. Um, I can put the link in as well. 
Um, I'll put the link in the chat to it as well. But this, this allows parents to actually go in and um, say, oh, what's being used? And they can see everything that is being used and approved in our district and learn a little bit about it if they're interested. So if, you, if it, as an educator, I have uh, parents or guardians who are asking, oh, what apps are being used in, in school? This is a great option for, for those pieces as well. So that's that, that parent side of the Learn platform. So um, before we go on there, I wanna go back and just make sure, answer any questions that you may have how did that walkthrough feel? Do you feel like you could request an app if needed or it could walk someone through requesting an app? Um, any of those things? Does anyone have any questions? I'm gonna show you one more thing. So I'm gonna give you a second to think, log in, look around for a second. Thank you, Belinda. That is my hope because this can be a little stressful and a little overwhelming sometimes for teachers uh, to kind of look at. Uh, but remember, we're really trying to just make sure that our students stay safe online. Their data is not being uh, harvested. There was, I mean, just as of last week, um, a program that we use pretty reg a lot of teachers use pretty regularly in our school district was just sued for violating um, and, and taking student information. That app actually wasn't even requested in our program yet. We, did, we weren't sure and aware of teachers using it. And so um, it's something that can help you as a teacher because how are we as educators supposed to stay on top of every single app's privacy policy and all those things, right? So this kind of helps support that, that goal here. So um, perfect. So the last thing I wanna just make sure you are aware is that any notifications will be sent to your Canyons District email address. I mean, sorry to your CSD docs email address. If you have not already forwarded your CSD docs email address to your Canyons district email address, I would recommend you talk to a coach or uh, get a hold of IT and find out how to do that. It's a pretty seamless process, but it's really gonna help you uh, make sure you stay on top of these and any other messages as well. It's something I recommend unless you're, you love checking two inboxes often which I struggle checking one inbox sometimes. So uh, two sounds ter terribly horrible. So um, awesome. Yes, sure. thank you so much. You're, you're getting things done. I love it. Um, we're also working on getting these subjects going and ready so that they're more applicable. So you could come in here and uh, find a subject that you are looking for and actually find things that are related to that subject. We've slowly kind of started some of these process. So you could come in and say, oh, I want only math apps. And it's going to show you just math apps that are in there. Um, the nice thing about that is it's also going to show you things that we don't have yet. So if you're looking for a new app to help a teacher or a student out with something, it'll show you what we have, but it'll also show you what we don't have requested yet, that you might be able to find something interesting here and then request it and see how that goes. So there is a lot of um, opportunity here. I think as educators, we kind of get overwhelmed with how am I supposed to know everything? And this is one of those answers to, okay, I don't know everything, but I know a teacher needs help with um, you know, lower grade, we're gonna say first and second grade, and they need support with their math or they need support with um, science, let's say. So I can come in here and choose these things and see if there's any apps out there that exist that can help with that. So I'm looking at first and second grade science apps and it shows me, oh, here's some ones we recommend for those grade levels. Have you tried looking at these? So it gives me a good place to start and go, okay, I have not looked at all of these yet. Let me see if there is something here. Let me request it and then move on from there. So hopefully this will be one of those places to kind of help you know everything you need to know as we go forward, okay? Um, is anyone, everyone having good time, everyone able to log in, it looks like. So that is good. Remember, this is with your CSD docs email address as well. So as you go through that process, okay. If there's no questions, we'll move on to the very last thing, uh, which is just remember that data privacy piece. As we go through all of this, data privacy is constantly evolving. And so if 
anytime you are putting information on the web, it's not just the information you're entering, it's also the student's behavior online. So we have some programs where um, the students log in, but what's being collected is what they click on, how fast they do something. That information is then being sold to other places to say, well, students in an elementary school click on these things or they like the, these things. And so really be thinking about data privacy as you're starting to use these pieces and reach out. Um, you can reach out to anyone in ISD and ask them, you know, hey, I need some more supports and information with data privacy and they would be happy to help and support you and find the people, if they don't know the answers, find the people to ask those answers, ask those questions, It'd be weird to ask those answers. So hopefully that was a good refresher for some of you there. Um, Shanda, great question. So Shanda's asking, um, why are some products approved but don't allow students accounts? Great question. So the reason is that they do not have a non-commercial sharing license. So we reach out to these companies and we say, hey, we know that you collect a student's first name. Um, do you share that commercially? And then they say, yes, we do. Therefore, we can't get, uh, we can't allow students to use that unless we have explicit written and signed permission from a parent because it's a commercial use. So some of the companies, when we reach out to them, they adjust their privacy policy and send us a thing back and like, oh, we adjusted it. We're not doing commercial now. And so it changes some of those things. So we need to review those as they go through. But that's mostly why it says no student accounts is because they're sharing that, that data commercially. Um, I always tell the story about um, a girl who her dad started getting uh, things in the mail from Target about a new baby. And the dad's like, we're not having a new baby. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, come to find out like two weeks later, his daughter found out she was pregnant um, and Target knew they were pregnant before she knew she was pregnant because of all of this big data that Target was buying, not only with what she was purchasing, but they were buying her web history from somewhere. They were buying like her, how often, like her tracking history from her, a, a app she was using on her phone. Anyway, they're able to target things like crazy. They know Target's able to know if you're going through a divorce. Target can know like all of these different types of things because of all that data. So that's why. So that's a great question, uh, Shanda. But if we hear of those changes, we're happy to relook at those and update them as well. So thank you. Thank you. Remember that all of this information is um, on the Canyons U website. If you go to canyonsdistrict.org forward slash Canyons U, you can find all of this information. It is in the bite size PD section um, that you can access those pages. These, this will be recorded as well as all the other recordings from the past. So you can review those, share them with other educators and things like that. And then you can get relicensure credit. The link is, um, I'll put the link in the chat and it is also on the website. So for attending today, you can get some relicensure credit as well. So. If that is all, I'll put this in the chat. Thank you. Thank you all for attending. And we will see you later. Thank you. Have a great one. Thanks, Linda. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Amy.